Cloda and I'm back, this time for a very special Christmas story time. I'm here with my four fairy friends, Layla Bell, Ali Mae, Evie B and Jojo. And they're in the Christmas spirit. Are you? Great. Are we ready for the story? Let's go. The Fairy Who Saved Christmas. Have you ever wondered how Santa fits down each and every chimney, big or small? Well, we know how. Fairy dust. This incredibly precious dust, called iridescence, is found when the first light of dawn hits the frozen or snowy ground and creates a beautiful sparkle. There is one particular group of fairies who bring the iridescence to Santa's gnome, Cecil, on Christmas Eve, just before dusk. One Christmas Eve, the iridescence handover did not go so smoothly. On that particular evening, a group of fairies known as the Delivery Pack, including a very excited young fairy called Pepper, flew to Santa's workshop and headed straight for the delivery room. Finn, the head fairy, knocked loudly on the door. The door swung open to reveal Cecil the gnome, who acknowledged them with a simple nod of his head. Pepper stared wide-eyed around the delivery room. This was her first journey as part of the delivery pack and she was absolutely thrilled to actually be in Santa's home. Thank you, said Cecil and Finn bowed. The fairies began to turn and follow Finn flying away. Pepper turned to catch up with the others but felt instantly that her flying felt harder now and much slower. Maybe she was just tired after the long flight. Stop! Cecil's voice boomed through the night air. Finn, Pepper and the rest of the delivery pack stopped suddenly. Then Pepper realised that her dress button had somehow gotten caught up with a string from the iridescent purse and caused it to unravel, leaving the precious dust to sink into the snow beneath. Pepper was horrified. The whole of Fairy Valley would know what had happened and that it was her fault. She flew up to a windowsill and held her tiny knees to her chest and sobbed. Before long, a voice inside the house caught her attention. It was a voice she had always longed to hear. Drying her tears, she wiped a tiny panel in the window and peered inside. There stood Santa himself with dozens of elves all around. Pepper glanced at their faces. They all looked worried. Pepper sat back down and gazed ahead. The sun was setting and Pepper watched as the soft sparkles bounced off the snow beneath. That's it, she squealed and flew down to pick up a sparkle that had just settled on the snowy ground. Not as strong as a dawn sparkle, but maybe it could work, she muttered to herself, her heart racing. As the other fairies started to gather more sparkles, Pepper raced to the delivery room and knocked as hard as she could. Cecil pulled it open and glared down at Pepper. I have to speak to Santa, she said as bravely as she could. Please, I need to show him this. She held out her tiny hand. The sparkle blinked up at them. You'd better come with me, Cecil sighed. Eventually, they came to a huge red door and knocked once before opening it. A sea of worried looking elves turned to look in their direction. What is it, Cecil? A warm voice asked. It's the fairy who lost the iridescent Santa. She wants to show you something, said Cecil. Pepper could feel her face getting redder and redder. Show her in, Santa instructed. The sea of elves began to part, leaving a path to Pepper. Come here, little magical one, said Santa. Pepper looked up as Santa tapped his arm. She flew up and landed on the softest, reddest velvet she had ever felt. 
I have found something that might help, Pepper said, and opened her hand to reveal the shimmering dusk sparkle. It's a sparkle from dusk, just as the sun set this evening, Santa. I can feel its power, but I'm not sure if it's as powerful as a dawn sparkle, but it can do this. Pepper flew over and landed beside a wrapped parcel and blew the tiny sparkle towards it. She closed her eyes and wished as hard as she could. When she opened her eyes, she saw the sparkle burst into a thousand pieces and fall like rain across the parcel before it disappeared. I'm fairly sure that each sparkle will be strong enough to transport the presents into each home. The only problem is that it may not be strong enough to transport you down the chimney too, said Pepper. There's just one more thing, she added. The sparkle will only follow fairy magic. So each present must be led into the house by a fairy. Pepper held her breath and searched Santa's big face to see any sign of his approval. Suddenly, a great big smile spread across Santa's face. The little fairy who lost the iridescence has saved Christmas. Hooray for Pepper! Santa's voice boomed and the room rejoiced. All the elves ran in every direction, talking excitedly to one another. Santa stood up from his chair and put his hands on his gigantic hips. Oscar, he called, and an important looking elf walked quickly over. Send the owls to Fairy Valley and tell them what little Pepper here has discovered. Please ask my good friend Queen Kate to make sure that every fairy living with the human family knows that they must help to deliver their family's toys. But Santa, not every home has a house fairy, said Pepper. Perhaps the International Fairy Council should alert the fairies all around the world, whether they're house fairies or not. Ask that everyone go to Fairy Valley to collect their dusk sparkle and meet you at each house. Then that way, those who don't already have a house fairy will get their presents delivered too. Santa once again smiled down at Pepper. Pepper, I need some luck tonight and I think you're it, he smiled. I'd really like it if you would travel in the sleigh with me tonight. Are you sure? I messed up before I could mess it up again, Pepper said. Santa smiled. Pepper, it was a mistake. Everyone makes mistakes. And anyway, haven't you solved the problem? Your clever discovery has saved Christmas. Meanwhile, back in Fairy Valley, the news had reached Queen Kate. And she was busy organising all of fairy kind to help Santa on the most important night of the year. When Santa's sleigh arrived at the first house, a fairy stood eagerly on the chimney top. Time after time, Pepper would show the fairies what to do. Each of them used the sparkle they had collected and transported the presents into the house. On one of the last rooftops, Pepper flew up to find no fairy there standing by the chimney. Oh no, she gasped as Santa climbed up beside her. He looked around anxiously and then suddenly his face broke out into a happy smile once again. Not to worry, Pepper. Here she is. Pepper followed his gaze and watched as Queen Kate herself flew up onto the chimney and landed just beside Santa. Ah, hello there, Kate. So good to see you again, he said. Hi, Santa. You're looking well, said Queen Kate with a beautiful smile. Then she turned to look at Pepper. Pepper, she said. And Pepper could feel her lips start to quiver and her eyes fill with tears. How can we ever thank you? Thank me, Pepper said, her eyes wide with disbelief. Why, yes, you have saved Christmas, said Queen Kate. But I lost the entire year's worth of iridescence first, Pepper said quietly. Queen Kate held Pepper's hand tightly. You are as you should be, clever, creative and hardworking, she said. You made a mistake 
but you also made it right again. I am so very proud of you. Then, with a beautiful dust sparkle in her hand, Queen Kate said, Santa, I think Pepper should deliver these presents. Oh, Queen Kate, are you sure? Pepper asked. I believe in you, said Queen Kate. I believe in you too, said Santa. Thank you so much. Here goes, said Pepper. With that, she disappeared down the chimney with the dust sparkle tightly in her hand. That Christmas was a resounding success. Every child woke up to find their gifts had been delivered and every fairy celebrated their new hero. Pepper, the fairy who saved Christmas. The end. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you'd like to read the full story, it is available as a book on our website. But guess what? We're going to give away five books and five fairy friends. And all you have to do to be in with a chance to win is name Santa's grumpy gnome. Just leave a comment below with your answer. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye.